Can individuals be interned in non-international armed conflict? If yes, under which conditions? As we have just seen, the categories of protected persons that exist in international armed conflicts are foreign to non-international armed conflicts. This entails that, in those circumstances, when captured by the enemy, neither state's armed forces nor armed groups enjoy POW status and combatant immunity. Thus, armed groups often run the risk of being prosecuted and tried under national law as traitors, terrorists or common criminals. Indeed, when IHL conventions were adopted, states were not ready to grant to non-state actors the right to participate in the hostilities. This reluctance remains even stronger today as many states are fighting armed groups that they consider to be terrorist organizations across the world. In other words, non-state actors were and are still considered to be illegitimate creatures who deserve to be punished for their acts. This also explains why the law governing non-international armed conflict does not expressly recognize a right to detain those who have been involved in the hostilities, nor does it specify the grounds for procedures by which a person may be detained. Moreover, it is unclear when any legal, any legal basis for internment in non-international armed conflicts currently exists in customary IHL. That being said, Military necessity requires that both governmental forces and armed groups be able to intern forces of the adversary when arrested. It is true that domestic law may provide a ground for internment by governmental forces. However, this may turn out to be problematic when these forces act abroad in the context of transnational armed conflicts. Armed groups will also be placed in an extremely uncomfortable situation as they will never receive any benefit from the government's right to detain under domestic law. Some argue that POW regime that exists in international armed conflicts should apply mutatis mutandis to non-international armed conflicts. Others consider that it would be more appropriate and protective to use the regime applicable to internment of civilians in international armed conflict which is based on an individual assessment of whether a given arrested person represents a serious threat to the security of belligerents. In theory, UN Security Council resolutions adopted under Chapter 7 of the United Charter could provide a legal basis for detention, although this rarely occurs in practice. Special agreements could also be concluded between the parties to the conflict in order to specify the applicable legal regime or extend application of Geneva Convention 3 or 4 to non-international armed conflicts. Nonetheless, independently of whether right to detain exists in non-international armed conflict, in low-intensity non-international armed conflict, each belligerent must respect the principle of human treatment and non-discrimination in the event that they do detain individuals. In high-intensity non-international armed conflicts, parties to the conflict are obliged to respect all the guarantees that are granted by Article 4 and 5 of Additional Protocol 2 to individuals deprived of their liberty. Moreover, IHL customary law provides for additional guarantees that are, in essence, similar to those granted by Geneva Conventions to POWs. However, we should not forget that armed groups are often less structured and organized than state, armed forces, and thus are generally incapable of applying all the provisions contained in the Geneva Conventions. Indeed, these provisions have been conceived for highly structured and developed state armies. Some flexibility is thus required in this regard.